everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I trust and hope that you are doing really great. I hope you've been enjoying your Tuesday and we're going to be taking a look at all that is happening across the North Atlantic and also uh, what is expected as it relates to the next couple of days because as you would have seen from the thumbnail, with that expected system to develop off the African coast, we could see it moving more to the west. So there are models, most models have shifted the system a bit more on a westward track and that would put the Caribbean in some sort of a bullseye for this potential system. Not a guarantee, but we want to take a look at what they have to show. With this sort of new consistency here with the westward trend, we definitely have to pay attention to the models out there. And so we're looking at this graphic here. There we have our two areas highlighted and uh, a non-tropical low pressure area could develop off the southeastern coast in the next uh, couple of days. And we could see that try to become a subtropical depression or storm. But regardless, it is likely going to be bringing impacts to portions of the eastern U.S. So those rough seas uh, for coastal areas as well as heavy rainfall and even those gusty winds across sections of the Carolinas as well as uh, the coastal mid-Atlantic states as we head into the latter part of this week. And then we've got our next area highlighted out in the MDR or main development region so that tropical waves should be emerging from the African coast as we head into tomorrow and we could see some development of it as it makes its way to the west and eventually to the west northwest and so as it relates to the long-term track that is pretty much unknown at this point in time and then we're going to go on to Nigel but before we do so let's go ahead and look at the satellite imagery and here we can see that we've got the hurricane being quite prominent up there uh to the east southeast of Bermuda and there is that frontal system so again we could see that low pressure area developing develop a non-tropical area of low pressure. Across the main development region, we're seeing loss of moisture, loss of convection right now, uh, some of which is in association with the tropical wave that is close to northeastern South America. So uh, that one there is producing quite a bit of activity and should it sustain enough thunderstorms, some of these showers will make their way into parts of the Eastern Caribbean, which could increase that rainfall potential for many areas. Let's zoom in. And so here we can see that we've got lots of showers and thunderstorms popping up, mostly due to that daytime heating, which causes that instability which in turn leads to the formation of uh, these thunderstorms. And so let's head further up north. And here we can see that we've got these thunderstorms also in parts of the southwestern Caribbean off the coast of Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama, and even developing inland off the Central American territories. Even up to Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, we see some activity there as well. And then for the greater Antilles, across parts of all the islands, there is some thunderstorm activity this afternoon. So Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and then in other areas such as uh, the Cayman Islands going to the Virgin Islands, and even the lesser Antilles from Mexico. Anguilla through to Grenada and even including Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago and especially the ABC Islands, there isn't as much activity taking place. And then heading up into the vicinity of Florida and the Bahamas, again there we see all that thunderstorm activity taking place across some areas and with extensive periods of heavy rainfall or a lot of heavy rainfall in a very short amount of time that can trigger flooding so guys please be mindful of that if you're going out. Now going on to Nigel, here we can see the hurricane on on satellite imagery at a closer view there we have it that eye is quite prominent a big contrast to before when we barely saw anything when it just became a hurricane so now it is strengthening a bit slowly strengthening and here we have the cone forecast now this is as of the 11 a.m update so by the time this video is posted the next update will be out maybe it would have strengthened a bit maybe up to 100 miles per hour but as of the 11 a.m update maximum sustained winds 90 miles per hour still cat one intensity and we see that it's remaining well offshore not going to be an issue for anyone and then eventually as it gains latitude or distance from the equator going further up north it will encounter cooler waters and just more hostile conditions and thus will lose its tropical characteristics and eventually dissipate maybe near Iceland as we head into the early part of next week. Now we want to go ahead and talk about what models are expecting. That's the main treat of this video. So we're going to be starting out with the GFS. I want to point out to you guys that what we're seeing now, these are updates and with a system that is so far out several days well, there are bound to be more and more changes as it relates to what models are showing but it is very interesting that all of them that I'm about to show you guys are shifting the system more to the west, showing a more westward track which indicates that we could see some slower development for one and for two that high pressure system reinforcing itself out there to steer the system toward the west. So let's go on to GFS. 
this is as we head to Tuesday of next week, the 26th. And there we can see that by this time here, as of the 12Z update, GFS is expecting a tropical storm. There we can see those black circular lines, isobars coming together. We see that value as well, 991, which is representing the minimum central pressure of the system. So a tropical storm approaching the Lesser Antilles. Take a look at this as we head to Friday of next week. So... By this time here, GFS is anticipating that we will see some significant strengthening. Take a look at this pressure, 951 millibars. That is the pressure of a major hurricane just to the south of Haiti. Now, I am not saying there will be a major hurricane. I'm just showing you guys the updates and we want to look at the trends with these models. Eventually, GFS shows the system making its way up toward the eastern part of Cuba and then through the Bahamas and then eventually it makes that curve out into the Atlantic. Let's go on to the ICON model. ICON does not go as far out compared to the other models, but let's take a look at it. So this is as we head to the end of this week, uh, Saturday the 23rd of the month. There is that low expected to develop off the southeast coast moving in and there is that expected tropical wave to emerge tomorrow so by this time here we're seeing some sort of development with the system and then as we head to wednesday of next week the 27th take a look at this two systems out there so another tropical wave expected to emerge behind the one that is on its way and uh, we could see some development of that one as well so here we have these systems seemingly moving on that westward track so that is quite interesting the canadian model now this model was showing the system being well out to see curving up sooner rather than later and now we can see a sort of westward trend with it as well. So Wednesday of next week, this is where the system is expected to be as per the Canadian model. And then eventually it starts to make that curve out, still remaining outside the Caribbean, but it has shifted a bit more to the west as well. Finally, one of the most accurate models out there, the Euro. This has also made uh, that change in terms of the system moving more on a westward track. So this is as we head to Saturday of this week, the end of the week, there we have that system well to the west of the Cabo Verde Islands and then we can see here that it is expected to move on more of that westward track so at first euro was showing the system curving up also sooner rather than later like the canadian model but now we can see that both of these are taking the system closer to the caribbean and this could mean both good and bad news i mean with more of these tropical waves moving in and more moisture we would have more rainfall which would offset the drought that many islands have been going through but at the same time a tropical storm or hurricane could be an, uh, a huge issue and do more harm than good i have been emphasizing and that and overall as we head to the month of October and November there is going to be sort of a pattern change things are going to get a bit more unfavorable out in the main development region but more conducive in the Caribbean and I also want to point out the fact that we've not had any major storms in the Caribbean or hurricanes rather so the warm waters there are just sitting around waiting for something to take up all that energy and the ocean heat content is off the charts very deep warm waters in some spots so if we should indeed have have something make its way in and other conditions such as the shear being conducive and all that moisture being prevalent then we could certainly see some significant development guys again that is not a guarantee but we have been seeing this westward shift with the models also, we are still a couple of days out. I want to keep emphasizing this because even though we're seeing this change here, it does not solidify that, hey, this is what will in fact happen. That low pressure area has not even developed just yet, but it is worth watching. And that is why I'm here to keep you posted every step of the way. So we look at what is happening. And of course, I'll continue to keep you updated with these dual updates every single day. So that is what I wanted to share with you in this update. And I trust and hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be with wise.